Hey everybody, this is Gary Vaynerchuk and this is Pod Sessions. Uh, pretty much my favorite pillar type that I've created in the last year or two, uh, but I don't get to do often because, you know, first I like mixing up the, the guests I have. Uh, the format, if you're listening or watching for the first time, is three guests and I, and we just kind of shoot the shit, talk about different stuff, people that I have context for. Either I'm watching very carefully from afar or actually know all three here, I actually know pretty well. Two I've met several times in person and one I've, I've interacted with you the most actually, uh, but we haven't met and I'm glad we finally did that and so I'm gonna let them introduce themselves one minute bio stories uh, who they are what they do and maybe a little fun fact and then we're gonna get into the show and I'm gonna talk about some topics and then also interject uh, my context of why I love them or admire them or curious about them or maybe dislike them I might be sandbagging somebody <laughs> right now who knows but why don't we start with uh, the lady to my left first all right. I'm Erica Nardini. I'm the CEO of Barstool Sports. I've been at Barstool for two years. We've taken the company from 12 people and very small investment to over $100 million valuation, and we're becoming a juggernaut in the men's space. Uh, prior to that, I had a company called Backstage where I really sought to connect music artists and their fans directly. I hate disintermediation and I thought that artists should be able to own their data, connect with their fans, have an LTV type relationship. And Lifetime ultimately- value for all the kids yep, at home. Yep. And ultimately to be able to know your fans and connect with them directly, which is something I've always been really passionate about. Was the CMO of AOL, worked at a bunch of big digital media companies, started my career thinking I was going to be a lawyer, which definitely did not happen. Okay, dude, <laughs> when, people, when you tell people you're the CEO of Barstool, mm -hmm. which is known for not only being a young male yep. brand, but like... Edgy. Yeah, like it's like the only thing out there that I feel like, oh, I could, like that, that's like, it's, it's real edgy. Yeah. Like, are people yeah. like, get the fuck out of here when you say, like, do, do some people yeah, actually shocking. think, like, if you're yeah. just hanging out in, like, real life, yeah. do some people actually think you're joking and making a joke yes. and then they're like, no, really, but what? Yeah. I would believe that. Um, like, like yeah. if I didn't know you and know how bad, like, really know how badass you are, but also just know that you were, yeah. and I was, like, at a dinner conference yeah, and everyone like, went around, yeah. I'd be like, oh, that was, that's funny. That's like, funny, yeah. It, I, I think I'm a curiosity in the whole mix of it yeah. because people wouldn't expect a woman to be a CEO of Barstool. I love Barstool. I'm super proud to work there. I was a huge fan of Barstool. Built a lot of backstage based on Barstool. Because you be know, because you me, know but. the underlining truth, not mm -hmm. the not the kind of like the the, the makeup that people get upset yeah, about whether somebody like, curses or are, is raunchy. I think we live in an outraged society. I think the pressure to be PC is just overwhelming, overwhelming, yeah. and str it's strangling. Understood. And the judgment that comes with that is punitive. And we are an agendaless brand that just cares about making its audience laugh. And we intimately get that audience. So yes. um, that's I'm what I love about here. it. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Go ahead, my man. Uh, my name is Reezy. I Do you think it's funny that I always say Rezzy? No, it's always good. You said you were a poor student, so like. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's right. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you saw this. Yesterday I put out a piece of content. Oh, did I didn't put out on my Instagram yet the I suck video. I made a video in 2008 that said I suck and one of the examples of me saying that I suck is I suck at uh, pronunciating and saying things the right way. Because mm. in the wine world, when I was doing Wine Library TV, I would get these hate emails from Italy <laughs> and be like, it's Barala, not Barala. Like I, people would get so pissed at me. Right. And literally I haven't had that feeling for years until I started giving you daps I'm in sorry. the wrong pronunciation. So uh, apparently knowing that two vowels followed by a consonant is a long vowel doesn't really matter in the <laughs> yeah. grand I had never scheme struggled. of things. You ready for this? I've never heard, is that true? Yeah, yeah. I've never two heard that Two vowels is always long when followed by a consonant. Yeah, I don't even know what a fucking consonant is. <laughs> it's That's a non, non vowel. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I go by Reezy. Um, I grew up super poor, food stamps, welfare, government health care. I never knew anyone that owned a business, had a nice car. No one in my family graduated high school, owned a house, nothing. I was homeless. I lived in hotels. Um, I dropped out of high school in 10th grade, had a kid, got married when I was 16, still married uh, 18 years later. Let's go. Um, 13 years ago, I found out about selling books on Amazon. And within a year- How? I uh, Somebody so said something somewhere. I, I was always I was already into eBay because they were running commercials on TV when I was like 14. So yep. I sold everything I could. Yep. 
and I was an avid reader. One day I sold my Star Wars books that I read, Got and it. they went for, I started them for a penny, and they went for like 80% of the retail value, which blew my mind. Later right. on in life, I seen I was in thrift stores, I seen people with barcode scanners scanning books. I, mean, like, I would ask them, doing? what are they doing? They would clam up, and they would like ignore, like act like I was invisible. Imagine an adult acting like you're invisible. So I was like, oh, they're, they're making a lot of fucking money. <laughs> so, and I, I'm technology minded, they have for, barcode for all the people scanners. Out there, uh, that's called street smarts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like some of the things they don't teach you in school yeah. is when somebody clams up, yeah. it's because they're making a lot of money. <laughs> right. Keep going, my man. So they had Freezy. they had they had yeah. a barcode scanner, and I was like, oh, those are you know at least a hundred to three hundred bucks. So they got to be making some money. So I like drilled into it. YouTube wasn't Hold out on, yet. The iPhone smile. wasn't Hold on, I gotta out. Stop because that just makes me smile too. You're like just thinking about your psychology at that point. Be like, yo, they're really on because yeah, they got that bar code. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's amazing. Keep going. So smartphones weren't out yes. yet. iPhone wasn't out. YouTube yes. wasn't out yet. Yes. Um, there was no Reezy resells. There's no books I could read. You yeah. know, I exhausted my Google Foo trying to figure out what it was. And I couldn't figure out how they were doing the books. Um, eventually, I, I just kept asking every person I would Somebody run into. And finally, on. some old lady, she just told, you. told me everything right away. And I was like, thank you. I ran home, looked it all up, and then I started selling books the next day. Apparently, they were selling them on Amazon. I didn't even know what Amazon was at the time. This was 14 years ago. Um, and so, I've been selling books books and other things on Amazon full-time for the last 13 years, and I sold over 5 million gross in that time period. About three years ago, I found a little green and black book called Crush It when I was scanning books to sell, and I, I scanned it. It wasn't worth anything. Fuck. No, no offense. <laughs> but, uh, but something about it just intrigued me. It's like, it, it reminded me of money. It's called Crush It. Like, what like douche names their book Crush It? <laughs> Nobody, yeah. ever. And then I had just read the the uh, Delivering Happiness book, um, the Zappos book, and he has a, a, a quote, on, quote the on the back of the book or whatever. So that sold me. I went home, opened it, read the whole thing. Like, I just sat down and read the whole thing. And uh, that's, that's how I learned who you were. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit, I've been doing social media. I was like that guy that would like post pictures of his dinner and get like 13 likes and be like, yeah, I'm yep. fucking killing it. Yep. Like, and then I was like, wait a minute, like I've been using it like a TV and now I can like push messages out and like everything, the whole, if you guys haven't read Crush It, that's the fucking blueprint, right? It's like, how can you, what do you wanna do? How can you bring people around you? Like what, you know, bring all your boys to the yard or whatever, and I was like, shit, I know how to sell shit. And before that I was like, 13 years of radio silence. I didn't tell nobody shit, I was clamming <laughs> up on people. Mm -hmm. And, um, as soon as I started sharing, I started making more money. People were like, "Oh, Reezy, go, how come you, how come go you don't figure. go to how come you don't go to the factory outlet and sell Nikes on Amazon?" And I was like, "You can sell Nikes on Amazon." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Holy!" They're like, "How come you don't sell DVDs?" I was like, "You can sell DVDs." Like I was Reezy, super. When are, when are people gonna realize doing the right thing is the right thing? Never. I uh, I don't know. It's hard for like for me. I grew up in a really selfish family, not religious, like just super yep. selfish, and then through following your blueprint and helping other people, which totally started out as a selfish thing in the beginning. I wanted to be a yep. YouTuber. I uh, wanted yep. to get my yep. moment or whatever. People start texting me, hey, we're, we're in Disneyland right now with the family and I never thought I would be able to take my kids to Disneyland, but because of what you did and we're able to have nice things now, or you know, my husband lost his job, uh, they canned him and our family's thriving because of your free content that you put out helped us to achieve stuff. And I get messages like that every day. And like you said, it's, well, you say, uh, what do you say? It's like oxygen. I say it's like crack. Not, not that I know what crack is, but like, <laughs> I mean, like I've never experienced it, but you know what I mean? It's like intense, right? It's like, it's there's nothing more. Than, it's a high. And then, do you know uh, what happens if you take too much oxygen? It's a high. Yeah. So, um, and then just real quick to wrap it up. Um, when your team, when you started the 2017 flip challenge, yes. right? Because I stopped watching your content a long time ago, yep, like as it. you instructed me, right? Yep. You get me sometimes on Instagram and Facebook with the short form, yep. but um, I could still sneak in once in a while, <laughs> right? Um, when the 2017 flip challenge started, my phone started blowing up, and like all my boys were texting me, like, "Bro, he he put you on," and I'm like, "What?" And because you had mentioned me before, yep. but this was like, you guys had clips from my yep. Snapchat on yep. there, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's." Two months ago, so someone at Vayner was watching my snap. Not two somebody, months ago, my guy. it was you. Well, and I don't you watch content. It? I'm always watching what's happening. I don't watch anything. I'm watching react. I don't consume any bar stool. This is real. None. I've never consumed any of Pat McAfee, KFs. None. 
but I know Barstool's the most important thing going on in sports. Right. Because I consume people. Yeah. I've never consumed a single thing of yours. Right. I've consumed people taking a screenshot of your YouTube with fucking, you with boxes. What I know about you visually is like boxes in the background of your garage because it was a still shot of somebody being like, yo, this Gary, you like flipping stuff on garage sales. This guy right. likes flipping stuff. You know what I mean? And then you you were emailing me like, hey, Crush It helped yeah, me. Yeah, and it was yeah, very yeah. nice. And I read all my comments and I read culture. Thus, I can put two to two together. So when I decided to do it, because I, you know, the reason that happened was because of Breakfast Club. I went to Breakfast Club the first time, I'm doing my thing, and DJ Envy's like, yo, this is all fun, motivational guy. You know, Charlemagne was like, Gary Vee's the shit, but Envy at that point was like, yo, prove it to me. He's like, so give us a real piece of advice for the people listening and who don't have. And you went on the, the Dollar went, Tree rant. I will always go to, if I, every time people ask me what would happen if I would lose it all, I go right back to the Dollar Tree garage sales goodwill. Hmm. Because I can go from zero to a million in cash if I got dropped in, if my face fell off my body like that Travolta Nicolas Cage, right? (laughs) And now I'm like, you know, a Latino woman. Tomorrow, (laughs) I can go from zero to a million easy because the high I get, do you know I found this Thundercat at a garage sale on Saturday a year ago at 12.45 p.m. of a garage sale on a table in package for a dollar? They weren't sleeping. Everyone was sleeping. This shit's supposed to sell at six in the morning if it's on a table for a dollar at a garage sale. Like when you know, you know. Is it original? Of course it's original. Damn, and you, you, know, you, you know too, right? Those, know are the, toy- those are the toys you had. That's right. I, yeah, I, I, don't, eight, I don't know. I know 80s toys, uh, right. like fucking, 80s toys you don't even best. know how, I, and I know like Rainbow Bright and yeah. fucking oh, yeah. my, it, my Little Ponies, like I'll tell you the name of the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja, like I'm fucking deep. Yeah. So Anyway, so that's what you did. So, yeah. Your phone blows when, up. When you started the yep. 2017. Yep, flip challenge. Yeah, that kind of like, I was like, oh, he's talking about my shit now. Yeah, like now I can really like get in the comments yep. and like help people. Yep. But re- before the 2017 flip challenge, what kind of really started our, our love affair yep. was uh, well, you were live streaming the eight hour live stream. That's right. And you showed for, in. There, and, and I was like, no, how many I, books did you so sell? There I saw, was, I you that. were streaming on three platforms, tw- uh, Periscope, yep. Facebook, yep. and Meerkat, yes. which is dead now. Yes. I couldn't get on Periscope. Yep. I couldn't get on uh, Facebook. They, literally, you one wouldn't let me on. The other one wouldn't let me comment. And all I wanted to do was comment. And so I took the third door. I went on Meerkat. And then I had my comment ready to paste and I was just waiting it, waiting and waiting. And there was like this lull where you like got all close to the screen. (laughs) And I was like, boom, posted it. And then you read it and it was, it was like all out loud and you like had a good reaction. And then I ripped it off of Paris or off of Meerkat. And I asked you if I could use it for my YouTube intro. And I said, that was it. And that was it, man. I'm glad you're here. Alex. My name is Alex. I wrote The Third Door and it's about my journey the past seven years tracking down some of the world's most successful people, figuring out how they launched their careers. So, you know, tracking down for business, Bill Gates, music, Lady Gaga, science, Jane Goodall, Maya Angelou, you know, Jessica Alba, Larry King, Quincy Jones, Steve Wozniak, and it's been this wild adventure. And a fun fact, which Gary knows, is the whole journey started when I was trying to fund the adventure. I was 18 years old. I was buried in student loan debt. I was all out of our mitzvah cash. So there had to be a way to make some quick money. Yo, and when that bar mitzvah cash goes, Yo, you, you know. stress. <laughs> well, your back's up against the wall when you have a dream and you don't have bar mitzvah cash. So I was like, what am I gonna do to make some quick money? And I had this dream and I was on Facebook the night before final exams and I saw someone posting free tickets to Price is Right. And This is crazy, keep going. <laughs> and you know, my first thought was, well, what if I go on the show and win some money to fund the dream? But you know, I had a problem. I never seen a full episode of the show before. Plus, I had finals in two days, so I told myself not to do it. But it was as if, you know, someone had pulled, you know, a rope around my gut and was pulling in a direction. So that night, I decided to do the logical thing and pull an all-nighter to study. But I didn't study for finals. I said how to hack the prices right. And I went on the show the next day and did this ridiculous strategy and ended up winning the whole showcase showdown, winning a sailboat, selling the sailboat, and that's how I funded the book. One more time. (laughs) For the people in the back. Put that last eight seconds one more time. So I pulled an all-nighter, studied how the show worked, went the next day, won a sailboat, sold the sailboat, and that's how I funded the book. What was the insight that you- Yeah, what's the hack? Give us the hack on the price. All right, so this is how the the price story works. 
They make it look random, like, Gary, come on down, as if they pulled your name out of a hat, right? Yeah. What I learned during my all-nighter of research is that there's 300 people in the audience, eight get called down, one wins. So the odds, the hard odds, are getting from 300 to, to the eight. eight. Yep. Once you're one of the eight, I, I figured I could just wing it from there. Yeah. And I realized there's a producer who interviews every single person in the audience before the show goes on. And then there's an undercover producer who's planted in the audience who confirm or denies the original producer's selection. So this is amazing. It was this wild experience and my hacking was less Einstein and more Forrest Gump, but it worked really what well. What do they want? You, they want someone who is just 100% in. Okay. They want, you this know, little I, Gary's this is why on I always okay. get. This is why I always get picked. Like, <laughs> this made me think yeah. of The Daily Show's first season, and I took my friend uh, Tokyo Joe, Joe Minikawa, who I reference a bunch from college. He's like a huge fan. This is right out of college. This is literally like one of the only days I did not work in my 20s. This is wow. true. Because he came, I love him so much. We're gonna go see John Stewart. I'm like, whatever. Uh, he, Joe wants to be an improv actor, that's why I moved to Chicago, he's gonna be on TV one day, this, that, the other thing. We go in the audience and, <laughs> and John Stewart comes up and talks to me because I'm just, I would have been picked for The Price is Right, let's of put course, it that way. I'm amazing. incapable of, of not, not being, being fired up. So yeah, that, once I got the money from The Price is Right, I was sort of like off to the races and it took two years to track down Bill Gates, three tell years. Me, tell me yeah. about that transition. So we're kind of now going into interview form, we've set some context. Yeah. You win a fucking sailboat, you sell a sailboat, you got a couple dollars. What's the leap from I've got a couple bucks from a sailboat to I've got to meet Bill Gates? What was the thesis that you were running on at that point? Was it that if I can figure out how the most successful people were, you clearly had a brain that figured out how to get on prices right. Were you always that kind of social engineer that you said if I can spend a lot of time with successful people over the course of a period of time, I might figure out what actually works and then I'll do that for myself later in life? It started from a life crisis. I was 18, I was a freshman in college and I was spending every day lying on my dorm room bed staring up at the ceiling. And to understand why, it wasn't that I hated it. It was that I am the son of Jewish immigrants, which okay. pretty much means I came out of the womb, my mom cradled me in her arms, and then she stamped MD on my ass and sent me on my way. Yeah. Like different mm -hmm. childhood than you. No question. Like the doctor track, 100%. Listen, this is, you know, yeah. I'm glad you're here and this is, I'm glad we're doing this podcast because it's gonna create some clarity. When I talk about being grateful, right? Think about you two talking about your backgrounds, different things, yeah. but two things that make me say I'm grateful for mine because I did have parent, you know, think of you. Both parent situations have ramifications that I worry about, which mm. is either it's like a tough scene or it's not a tough scene, but there's an expectation on the child that doesn't take the child into consideration. Mm. The fact that my mom took me into consideration, like watched me, and then decided, okay, you'll be an entrepreneur, not that she used that terminology. Watched my brother AJ, I really changed up the game on my mom because she looked at my brother's AJ and said, oh, you're gonna be a lawyer. Hmm. That means you'll be a good student. I swooped in because I was older. I was like, fuck lawyer shit, as you understand. I was like, you're gonna be an entrepreneur, but he was kind of like half. Um, I'm just grateful, and so that MD, you know, a lot of people are listening right now, and they understand Reezy, right? They understand being a minority, a female, not coming from nothing, that's understandable. We do not talk about, in our society, the people that I actually have equal. Let me say it now, and people can get mad at me, just because I know what depression looks like. We're judging happiness on the outside. We have not started the conversation on happiness on the inside. And when we get to the conversation of happiness on the inside, I know the people in this room, some of the people they know, the people that are the most unhappy on the inside are the ones that have too much. And it is, I get it, and you can judge me now, I'll see you in 80 years. When people talk about you know, privilege, they talk about all the right things. White privilege, yes. Male privilege, yes. Gary Vaynerchuk's point of view on privilege, the right mindset. You want real privilege? Get born with good mental DNA and be in good mental DNA environment because having nothing or being stamped that you need to be an engineer, lawyer, or doctor from the get is adversity. And it's going to lead to either really bad shit or really great shit. And that, my content on a daily basis is to help somebody who's on the path of really bad mm. shit find a curveball to start the process of being in really good shit because it's a kissing cousin. You are literally gonna be completely devastatingly unhappy and have a piece of shit life or completely dominate. The delta is enormous. 
Alex, I apologize. So you have an MBA? Well, you didn't apologize because you actually teed it up perfectly because your content is, I was 18 years old, a freshman in college, the pre-med of pre-meds, but I'm looking at this stack of biology books feeling like they're sucking the life out of me. So then I'm wondering, maybe I'm not on my path. Maybe I'm on a path somebody placed me on and I'm just rolling down. So now I'm going through this life crisis. I'm watching your videos, literally 18 years old, two months into college in my study rooms on a Friday night. All my friends are at a fraternity party. I'm up there watching one of your keynotes for the first time. And I swear, man, I will never forget that night because my dad called me like five times and I didn't answer. Because for the first time I was realizing, maybe this isn't my path. So now not only do I not know what I want to do, I don't know how all the people who I looked up to, how they did it. How did Bill Gates sell his first piece of software out of his dorm room when nobody knew his name? How did Spielberg become the youngest director in Hollywood history when he's rejected from film school? These are the things they don't teach you in school. So in my pain and in my confusion, I had a very naive idea of, well, why don't I just call up Bill Gates and interview my husband, myself? I thought it would take three months. Seven years later, it just came out. Unbelievable. Yeah, thank you, man. Good for you, And man. thank you for all the advice along the way. My pleasure. Big time. My pleasure. Let's go back around. What is the most interesting thing in culture, in the world going on right now that doesn't have to do with Barstool? Like, what are you watching? Like, is there a restaurant that has a $800 cheeseburger? Are you obsessed? This is how I'm gonna preface it. What are you obsessed with right now that you're watching that's happening out there? I've come to realize, oh, I'm an, anthrop- I'm an anthropologist. Like, I'm starting, it's amazing who I think I am now. Literally, I decided this a week ago. The last week, I'm like, oh, those people that go to the jungle for four years to study the red-beaked baboon, that's me, I just do that with people. So I'm always watching, that's my love. That's, I always find it funny because I'm gonna interrupt you guys 10 times here and everyone's like, you're not a listener, you're such an asshole, stop interrupting people. I'm like, man, I'm such a listener. It's just I listen differently. I'm watching for cues. That's what I've done my whole life. So there's always things that are catching my attention. Right? Like for example, if this was a year and a half ago, I'd be like, this woman Cardi B's got my attention. I've never listened to her. I didn't listen to a single Cardi B song before I read over 100,000 comments about Cardi B. Yeah, that's weird. I've now realized, and I'm articulating it more because maybe it's gonna help somebody figure out shit. But that's kind of like heady. What about like, you're, what are you obsessed with right now? Like a new drink, a new t-shirt, a new show, your nephew's new girlfriend? Like, give me something here. <laughs> Okay, I'm obsessed with a lot of things. I'm obsessed with going into nail salons and seeing what they are watching. What is on the, the default show? What is the default show in a nail is salon? Is it politics or is it like daytime like Steve Harvey? The best ones are either Korean or Chinese television. Love it. Korean and Chinese television is fascinating because it. it's YouTube, it's young, there's a lot of characters, they're doing stupid shit. And the energy is the insane. Charts. Like I don't like it when the nail salon runs the like cheapo fake news station, right? Of Where course. it's like the weather, yes. innocuous yes. content. But if you go to, will you like walk in? I, I just peep, walk in to just peep, see, and, and you're then out. Leave. Yeah, All, like because it's New York City, so you can. You so there's like bro. sixteen nail salons. Love the you. other thing is Irish bars. I love Irish yes. bars. So I always walk into like. Like I walked over here. McGillies. Yeah, McGillies. I'm yeah. like, okay, you walk in like, who's there? What's on the television? What are they serving? There's a lot of proper football on those televisions. Proper football. Yes. That's right. There's a lot Especially of in the morning. Reezy? So uh, nothing as weird as stalking the nail salon yeah, stock, nail salon. choice no, television that shows. Was but amazing, <laughs> uh, I'm super into coffee, uh, specifically espresso. Ooh, okay. I have a, have a machine at home. Um, is it fancy? Yeah, super fancy. But it's like I got it for these cheap. Is, I got it for quick, cheap on eBay. I repaired it. But it's sick. Guys, these special machines are expensive. I, I mean, I don't even, yeah. Very I just expensive. found out about this. I don't know if people know about this. You thousands can spend like $20,000 on an espresso machine. Oh, yeah. A personal one? Yeah. But I didn't what, know this. What does the cost do? Like, what makes it better? So it's just all about like the name on the machine. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not really. Boom! It's, it's like, all about it's all about consistency, the steam right? Is so a like your hotter. your Nespresso, that's just like some bullshit, right? Yeah, that's like you're a like, like whatever. Yeah. You're into it is. the Maserati yeah. shit. So it's like right? it's all it's like manual. You know, you, you grind the coffee of expensive grinder. The particle size of the coffee is is uniform. Yeah. Do you, you find put this it in the cathar- thing and you, like, do you feel and like is the it rich? You feel nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I drink a lot of coffee, so I do take pride in knowing like what's going into it. Like I used to drink eight cups of coffee a day and my boy Chris Baca, who is like a nationally ranked barista, he owns 
this coffee that I brought for the team or whatever. He, uh, he would see me coming. He's like, dude, you drink like eight cups of coffee a day. Have you ever tried espresso? And I was like, no, what's espresso? And he's like, well, it's like four to six ounces of coffee caffeine wise, but in a one ounce package. So you get all your caffeine you need, but you have a lot less acidic beverage in your stomach. So for me, it just started out with like, like hacking it basically like, cool, I'll have less of a stomach ache and I'll be just as jacked up. And then I'd, I became like enamored with it and to learn like, oh. Yeah, it became like what, a wine thing. It, exactly. 100%. I shit you not. When no, I started it's the same thing. See, like going back into the old wine content because yep. you started doing like the brown bag stuff. So yep. I was like, I like this shit. So I started watching the <laughs> yep. old shit. Yep. And I realized that like I knew dick about like the finer things in life until yes. I started doing like food wise or whatever. Until yes. I started doing the coffee because yes. it's like, where is it from? How is it And then roasted? it opens up the whole How world. is it prepared? Now, what does it taste like? Yeah. Butter, toffee, like yeah. fungus, it's like cool, whatever right? the hell. It's insane. And that's what gets you into like sushi or oysters or it just opens up Do the whole Do you think world. it tastes right. better if you buy it? Like I can't, I, it doesn't matter how good whatever machine, I don't have a good machine right, so right. it's probably part of it. But like I have to buy coffee. It tastes better if I buy it. Mm. Do you oh, think that's true or not? make it. Yes, if it's no, in, I think, I can, I think it, in ten else. minutes I can I teach like you how to make the best cup really? of coffee. Really? Okay, that's in your the house. next episode of Pod <laughs> Sessions. <laughs> Alex, I am obsessed, especially the past year with stand-up comedy. Okay, that makes. I, I think, you're gonna do that, aren't you? Like I know you do it. Like, are you gonna go? I like, do it. I do it in you, keynotes. I know. You, are you gonna really do it? It's like a like, alter are, ego fantasy. Totally. Just like being a rapper. I know like, you. I know you well enough to know this. Do you think you're gonna do it? Yeah, I'll fuck around with it. Yeah, I thought so too. You gotta give it a, you're, you have enough of, I've never said that out loud, by the way. I believe Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Well, All you, my friends I, have asked and I'm like, no. <laughs> I know, I, and I knew that I could get you to say because I knew that you knew you couldn't trick me. I, I really, really think you will and here's why. I know you just enough to know this. Hmm. There's too much upside and not enough downside. Hmm. That's why you're gonna do it. It's a hack. And it's fun as shit, man. There's too much upside. It's why I did the sneaker deal. The reason I did the case with sneaker deal was it was too much upside with not enough downside. If it worked and it's kind of like doing its thing right now and I gotta keep building momentum, then it's like, wow, you really, that's crazy that he pulled that off, the economics, the God forbid the whole genre goes, then I'm the fucking Jordans of the whole thing, fuck you Michael Jordan, right, that whole thing. If it didn't work, what funny fodder like mm-hmm. nine years from now where like I'm being interviewed and be like, okay, look, you're really successful. Before we start this fireside chat, can we go back to 2017? <laughs> the fuck were you thinking about doing a sneaker? Too much upside with not enough downside. That's why I think you're gonna do it. If you're watching Seinfeld right now on Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee, I think in 50 years, we'll look back and say, he was a fucking philosopher, not a comedian. Oh, I understand. I, I fully think, and the he's one, a craftsman listen, too. Listen, I'm a, I'm a, I have a lot of respect for Seinfeld. I wouldn't call myself a huge Seinfeld fan. I will say this, because I, uh, I adore Hassan Minaj. Yeah. I watched that episode because of Hassan Minaj, yeah. uh, and I was super disappointed in Seinfeld's inability to, it's funny, I cut people off because we don't edit. They film all day, they edit really easy to make it seem like nobody's getting cut off. I thought that was a super awkward episode and it made me think that I was surprised that he wasn't capable of adjusting to the guest. Like, I thought that the Kate McKinnon, which I also watched, it came natural, thus it was great. The Hassan Minaj, it didn't come natural and I thought it was really bad. Thoughts? I think that your keynotes are stand-up comedy. And I I think And I think with Seinfeld, you, especially your Q and A's. That's that's where you get the most stand up. Yeah. When I see it come out in you. Yeah. And I think with Seinfeld and Hassan Minaj that episode, it was surface. Yeah. And it could have gone deep. I've seen other stuff with yeah. Hassan, like the both. White House correspondence. Both. 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 For both. I think it was styles make fights. Right. That's. I'm right. A, I love you for. No, give me something. Do you know how many people never ever react when I use that analogy? That's a burnt Where's that sugar. From? It's it's a oh you have to be an. An old school boxing guy, like like the guys with cigar. Bert Sugar was the icon. He pushed, p- passed away several years ago. Like a 1957s Irish bar, three cigars, a fight's on. <laughs> it's two great fighters, and everyone's bored. And and one guy's gonna look at the other guy and go, "Styles make fights." <laughs> and, and and it's like my life philosophy. When yeah. people walk in here and quit VaynerMedia and tell me I'm a dick. Hmm. I say in my brain, styles make fights. Mm. This kid's a great kid. VaynerMedia's got great intent. Styles make fights. It didn't click. At this moment, at this time, it didn't click. They're not a dick. Vayner's not a bad place. Styles make fights. 
And that's what I, that's why I was watching it and six minutes, like two seconds in, but six minutes in, I'm like, fuck, styles make fights. It's true. Uh, Pacquiao Mayweather. Yeah. Mm. That's the styles. most extreme style. Styles yeah. make fights, you know? And, and but what's, what's funny is like, it depends on who, like, you know, it's just, it's styles make fights. Mickey Ward, Arturo Gatti, two solid to below average fighters, depending on how you want to argue it but the two of them made magic over three fights. If literally you you love sports or th- if you love theater, yeah. go Google hmm. Arturo Gatti, Mickey Ward and watch those three fights, you'll shit. Better than the ridiculousness of a Rocky fight and drama in real life. Mm-hmm. It's actually crazy. I know a lot of you aren't boxing fans and UFC'd out and a lot of you kids don't like either or whatever or older, go watch them. It's fucking theater. Eric, what's happening in sports? There's a ton. So speaking of that, we bought a boxing promoter last October called Rough and Rowdy, and it is all style makes fights. Well, this is your pay-per-view shit, right? Yeah, Which, amateur is, fighters. I'm so obsessed with you. It's, it's awesome. It's so you're fun. so smart. So fun. I just want people to know I think you're smart. Thank you. I think nobody's smart. I think you're smart, smart too. Well, thank you. <laughs> that pay- Nobody. Like, I'm blown away by what you guys have done there. So fun. Yeah, the cool. economic, like people don't get, it's really almost like the, you know what influencers have done to like real celebrities? Mm-hmm. I think that's what you're gonna do to mainstream yeah, to media, totally. 100%. But NetNet, what's amazing, why I'm obsessed but, but, but with it. But please tell everybody, I don't know what you've okay. publicly said about numbers or not from a success standpoint. Mm-hmm. Really quick, because I don't think okay. a lot of people know what we're so talking rough, about. Yep. So you did a pay-per-view on the internet. We did a pay-per-view. So we bought a boxing promoter. Dave Portnoy, who the founder of Barstool, <coughs> huge visionary, single best promoter I've ever met in my life. Went and did a video in 2012 on this weirdo West Virginia boxing promoter where he just had guys from West Virginia in a high school basketball gym beat the shit out of each other. You know, the, sh- the street fights yeah. that I, I watch, I consume no content. The only thing that catches me still to this day is two random people fist fighting totally, it's a train on Instagram you cannot, or YouTube. You cannot look away. I love it the most. Cannot look away. Because the high that I get from a natural knockout, a one punch knockout, I've not been able, the only, I, the high, sports, which I'm obsessed with, here's the thing, back to highs that we mentioned earlier, that get me from zero, the, the high is going from zero to a thousand. Mm-hmm. A one punch knockout, a overtime scoring goal. Mm-hmm. Playoff hockey, yeah. Overtime scoring totally. goal. I mean, I don't even care about hockey for a long time now because the Rangers won in '94. Sometimes, you know, my my son's starting to get into sports, so I'm making him consume everything. A playoff hockey game that is because it's over in a blink. It's over in a blink. It's like life. It's why I love life so much. Over in a blink. Yep. But then there's also like pride and honor and class and the backstory like, the fuck you i'm gonna win like it's all of that so net net we put together this was boxing event and it's it's for an internet consuming era it's three 30 fights three one minute rounds it goes very wow. very very fast so that's my opinion of sports when's your next one uh next sunday so youngstown you ohio done? we have done this is rough and rowdy five so Next Sunday. Five. Next Sunday. I'm going to watch it. Tyler, we'll, get my yeah, calendar right. Live from Youngstown, Ohio, which is the birthplace of boxing in the U.S. Love it's it. going to be awesome. Grit. City of grit. Love it. We did a, we have a marquee fight between a cop and a skateboarder. Wow. And the cop is awesome. A guy named Ryan Young gave us full access. We rode around with him 24/7. in the car. 24-7. And he got fired. And Who's he got, the skater? The skateboarder? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a skateboarder, guys. So he's like he a got local fired skate- for got, doing it? Got fired because he's in Barstool Sports Does Video. He, is he looking for a job? We're going to make him whole for the next two years. I love you so much. Guys, I'm telling you, I'm so, like, we were putting this together. Alex has been hitting me up. He's like, yo, I need to promote my book. I fucking love the hustle. Reese has been hitting me up for three years. Like, yo, can I get a fucking physical cosign? I appreciate the verbal cosigns. So I knew I wanted to do a pod sessions because I'm running out of time before. Like, I got to fit a lot of stuff in the next three weeks. So it's like, cool, time for a pod sessions. And I'm like, all right, these two fucking dick faces. Who should I round? <laughs> who can I round out this show with that is so gnarly that's just going to make this whole thing fun to look back at? And that's why I texted that's you. So nice. I'm super into you. So nice. Okay. Reezy, what's the best like little flip you've had? Like whether it's a book or something. Like listen, single nothing, flip. Nothing gets a high for me. 
like a single micro flip. I actually don't oh, want to hear you. about you buying out a warehouse and making no, 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 80K. No, I'm talking about one book, one scan, or I don't even know what no, you're currently up to it's on the not flip. A book, so I, I didn't think it would be. The best single item I ever flipped. No, no, I don't want historics. We'll go to that too. In the last 60 days, because I assume you're still a practitioner, yeah, yeah. or are you now just a fucking pontificator? No, no, no. Respect. Right. So what have you flipped in the last 60, 70, 80 days that was just like a funny one-off, I want some random shit, you're like. It's super boring because no, no, I, I, sell, love mo- this I sell mostly books, so I definitely I sold several well, $300 books in so the last I, month okay, that I bought I for that. a quarter. Cool, so I need this. this How is, do you the, know that they're great when you buy them? He scans the fuck out of them. So okay, we have the entire have a $300 Amazon. dollars scanner. Yeah, well, they're cheaper now. Technology caught up, but and we have smartphones, so I have the entire database of Amazon in my phone, and then I scan it with the barcode. I he don't need Wi-Fi. For, I don't need this? cell Ready signal. For this? Ready for this? Not only does he have a sense of the price, but he has a sense of the demand. Yeah, so you know the market. Yeah, now I wanted to give this to the audience too. It's called sales rank on Amazon. So it's the number that yep. indicates how well something sells, and they're they're separate for each category. So yep. in books, the number one best-selling book has a sales rank of one. Right. And I'm sure like crushing Gary- Crushing it, it's probably crushing what, it. Well, maybe <laughs> on not. maybe on launch day. <laughs> do you be. know what you got up to on launch day? On launch day six? Num- that's fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask so, a question? Two actually, I think. Wait, so, so I Saturday mornings, are you just prowling around yard oh, sale? Yeah. Like, I don't mean to be naive. Not anymore. No, 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 he's not, I, I, I he's don't VIP. do yard sales I do. too much. I do. You do. Because I'm an amateur. Do you have staff that I actually really, really enjoy it. Like one of my favorite things is to just look up completed sales on eBay. By the way, like, that is Gary, my- that's And just go, oh, marbles. Like when, like I'm just basically copying. I'm like, whoa, marbles <laughs> are worth money. Whoa, mind blown. You're like, oh, people collect vintage paper. Like, it's the and best. It's just, and you're like, I saw some last week. They was They were throwing it away. Like- it's you so have you created like an it. affiliate model? Because that's what I'm doing so with Barstool basically I, and I think that that's fascinating. I, no, it's I different. am not good at monetizing my audience or anything. I okay. still do my core business, like my business that I run, which I have a business he's partner following, with. He's following the blueprint, and then I do, the smart one. And then I do my personal brand, which makes me a little bit of money. Like my YouTube video, there's links. Like if you need a printer, he's doing my model. go get the okay. printer he's, he's or okay. whatever. Smart. But he's okay. going to get bigger economics when he gets paid $100,000 for one speech than making an Okay, art. fine. Got it? Yeah, I'm, he's I'm, doing the personality. I'm actually he's, going to he, London to speak in right. two weeks. He, like okay. me, has economics elsewhere, thus isn't monetizing his Fine, audience. I got you. Got it? To build the attention totally. to monetize in the future if he even chooses sure. to. Smart. What's gonna eventually happen is he's gonna realize the admiration's a bigger high than the money yeah. and he's not gonna get to <laughs> yeah, even yeah. monetizing the audience. Which is okay. Which is the best. That's mm-hmm. how you yeah, fucking have now, legacy now I, totally. and everything. Because totally. now, you know, last year people would hit me up for sponsored YouTube videos yep. and I would tell them my price and they would not even yep. answer. Yep. Yeah. And now I tell them and they pay me right away. Yep. So wow. probably sure. be raising the price soon. Good for you. <sighs> What's the best single? So 300, ready? Because I need people to hear this because I'm upset. Listen, you know how passionate I am about this. Yeah, Authentically passionate. I don't talk about anything outside my kind of normal stuff other than a little bit of co-signing some hip hop artists on the rise and a little bit of like, like the, and you've seen I've gotten really hot on like because you know I'm getting a thousand emails that say oh are you okay Gary V but I have no money so I went to the Rogus place which is cool here's the new flip Craigslist free yep it's free yeah, I saw that you go and you take it it's fucking free then you go to Facebook Marketplace because the thing that you learn about Craigslist free well he's as good as books are small mm-hmm. Craigslist free is bad because shit is big mm-hmm. it's like a fucking chair mm. and fucking cinder block and like totally. right they still so, don't believe you though right so they still don't it's believe free you. so my thing is not arbing on Amazon and eBay which is what I would recommend for his world and the stuff I love but on Craigslist the flip is Amazon Marketplace excuse me Facebook Marketplace you go and pick up a fucking hammock yeah. And then you list it for 30 on Facebook and you sell it in fucking five minutes. The reason so many people are selling them in five minutes is it's a supply and demand game. Yeah. Facebook Marketplace mm-hmm. is still not saturated, but Facebook is so at scale that people the are seeing shit. Totally. Yes. It's clockwork. There's so much free smart, stuff smart, that smart. like, for example, I we moved to an apartment. We moved to a condo from our house okay. and we had a trampoline at our house. Well, we can't have a trampoline at the condo. Right. So I tried to sell it for months before we moved. Yeah. No one bought it. Yep. So I gave it away for free the day before we moved. Free it. trampoline that I only had for three months, 18 foot trampoline. How much did you pay for it? Probably 350 bucks at least. And they so, got it for free and, and he, you could easily sell that. So it's but for you 90. Have, you have to wait it out. You have to use better yep. keywords. You have to put it on a different so marketplace. Smart. Treadmills. People, January, people are like, I'm going to get fit. They buy treadmills. They buy freaking 
workout machines, whatever they're called, and then they do it for like a month. And March gets comes dusty. Along. Yeah. yeah, then it's for on the free section because no one's going to buy a treadmill. People buy a brand new treadmill. You need to be creating QVC. Why haven't you done that? Listen, I've got, listen, why haven't I done that is like the story of my life. What do you want? I can do it. You know, like I'm so crippled by opportunity that like I could do everything. What I think I'm doing right now, is, and I, you might remember this from the rant and like past backstage, I'm building a machine to let me do everything. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna do fucking everything. Yeah. I'm just patient. My machine is great. At 72 yep. years old, I'm gonna be like, yep, QVC, the, what, yeah, t-shirt company, yep. like new Facebook, totally. fine. Like I'm just building totally. a fucking death star. Pipes, I'm gonna, pipes, 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 pipes. <laughs> I'm gonna totally. destroy everything. You have to understand, Vayner's gonna do everything. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking take over you. everything. All of it. Totally. Happily, and everyone's gonna be happy for me. Yep. What's the, be- so this 25 cents to 300 bucks. Here's yeah, why yeah. I'm very passionate about this, Reezy. The most important. There's all the people that you and I think about when we talk about this subject matter that can literally go from being miserable making 78,000 being the regional manager of four restaurants to making 109 flipping Star Trek memorabilia because they love it. We know that's real, which is crazy. I'm actually really focusing on something very narrow lately with my whole, I've got no money, none. And 100 bucks is game changing. Like literally, I mean, Tyler, you're the one that knows this. Like, and some of them, my social media team on the DMs, this stuff is emotional. Like, oh, totally. like making an extra hundred bucks That's a month a is deal. like, and you know this, you come from that yeah, dirt. Yeah. So, so I'm just like, man, fucking Craigslist free, if you're just raw and hungry, even if you're not raw and hungry, even if you wanna just move out of your apartment, yeah. like if you don't give a fuck about what people, the problem is people give a fuck what you, th- you know why I'm crazy? I'm now at where I'm at, and I'm rolling up to garage sales, and people like, Gary V, and I'm still in garage sale mode. I'm like, yo, you want a quarter for that? Yeah. And like, when you really don't give a fuck about what people yeah, think, totally. you know, like I'm pulling up in like a, a like an ex, like a Range Rover. I don't know how expensive. I don't even know how much my cars are. Like, uh, not a like like a car that I'm sure is probably some money. And like negotiating with people, like, yo, fuck You're that fifty cents. I'm like twenty five cents, cents, motherfucker. Yeah. When you don't care about what, the biggest reason somebody broke as fuck is not listening to my advice is they care about what other people think. They're embarrassed to go pick something up and carry a chair on the bus because they have no money because they're worried somebody's gonna look at them. I want people judging me. I want the chip on my shoulder. Anyway, 25 cents to 300. What is that? Goodwill scan everything and one of them's 300? Yeah, are they usually Are they usually college books? So the best selling books are not are nonfiction mostly. Yep. Textbooks are the cream of the, the crop whole, right, right? for sure. It's a huge scam. So like if, if you've you, been if, to college, you know that hurts. You know it's like two hundred fifty dollars so books. And you don't read it. Yeah. You I know you cheap. do heavy garage. Uh, excuse me, heavy Goodwill that kind of stuff. Right. Do you ever garage sale? I used to a lot. Okay. But in, so now I I know why it's less efficient than Goodwill and other right, things right, right. and church sales and book sales. I get that. Take me back to garage sale day. Right. Did you ever hit a mother load where you literally rolled up on like a professor or like a former college admin and there was like 88 textbooks? Did you ever, so, like AJ, my brother, right? Right. We have the story of, we were hardcore, we were so right about video games. Like I love when people are like, oh you're just, I just posted this article about why I'm going all in on Twitch and my whole social media is like, oh I beat Gary Vee to something, you're so late, you suck. And I'm laughing, I'm like motherfucker, I was buying video games in 2000, like cartridges, because I thought there would be memorabilia in 2030 when you were like fucking two, dick. Like I'm right. not late, I'm just entering when I enter. So. We were hardcore video games. We were so right. We used to have like 100 Contras. They were five back in the day. They're like 45 now. Like we nailed it, right? right. If my dad didn't throw them all away out of spite and anger of us holding them there, it would have been like a, an incredible ROI. What's really interesting to me is we did have that one day that we dreamed of. He ro- we rolled up on a Friday afternoon, which is again, to an old man that was 70, which again, never has video games, right? but somehow it must have been his grandkid stuff, AJ finds a box with unlimited rare RPG games like Ninja Gaiden Trilogy and fucking Mega Man this and five. Literally AJ bought for $10, 40 games that was worth almost three, $4,000. That's so sick. Did you ever have that in the textbook game? Um, I rolled up at a, um, a Christian school and they were completely closing down or they were selling everything. I'm assuming they were closing. How'd you find that? Was that Craigslist or uh, the internet or were you driving and saw a big sign? 
No, you knew. it was. I use an app called Yard Sale Treasure yeah, Map, yeah. and they map it aggregates, so it aggregates <laughs> yeah, all, of course, the, all the different <laughs> yard sales or whatever. Sale, garage sale, I know yeah, yeah, all yeah. that shit. So I, I don't remember because I was just okay, going go to a different one. Yeah. But so you roll up. It wasn't as big of a lick as it could have been because it was an elementary school. So got elementary it. school textbooks are or not. Less, you know, yes. it's rare that but they're worth like thirty bucks. I got like five hundred books, and you know, like thirty dollar books. I got like twenty copies of it. You know, so they weren't like two hundred fifty dollar books. Uh, I paid like a quarter a book or something, but they were, it wasn't even about the money. They were just happy that I took all the books because people were taking the yeah, desk, of course, of people course, were taking the course. furniture. They were like, what are we going to do with all these yeah. books? I was like, I'll take them. And so what did you have to do? Did you have to go, did you have a big enough vehicle? Uh, or you I had just a- packed them in the Subaru, multiple trips. You were able to, uh, yeah, multiple yeah. trips. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about one of mine. Back to paper, which I learned along the way was great too. This is a great story that I don't think I've ever told. I was going to a wine library business meeting in, it was in high school, 2005, in 2003 or four. Like a 2.30, like go to this restaurant, taste wine, buy for the store. Were you getting into it? Yeah. Fine. Uh, this story's too good. I don't care if Erica has yeah, to go, live go, in the middle. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to like 2.30 in Chatham, New Jersey to fucking, you know, serenade to taste like 13 Rieslings to buy one for a wine library. And I see, and I'm a little, a hair, and I mean like Erica has to go in five minutes hair early, right? And it's like garage sale today, Friday, and Fridays are gangster because the, a lot of like, the, the scale comes on Saturday People are morning. still at Fridays work. Fridays at work. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going. I fuck, and I'm one of these <laughs> weird ones where I was, I said I can't go, and then at the last second, so I kind it. of like had to go, I like went past the turn and almost got like into an accident. And I roll up, I walk in, and I see an old Huckleberry, uh, what's that Hanna-Barbera character, Huck? I don't know, Huck, uh, The no. bluish dog? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Huckleberry so I, Finn, yeah, so Huckleberry so, Hound. Yeah. Hound, Huckleberry, Huckleberry Hound. Hound. So I saw a 1978 Knickerbocker, Huckleberry Hound, nice condition, I'm like boom, got it, dollar, good, that's like 30, I'm already pumped, right? I go in the basement and I see fucking boxes, and I mean 80 boxes, and I wo- roll up into it, and it is playbills from Broadway at a scale that you couldn't believe from the 40s to huh. the 80s. Wow. So I go and it's an estate sale, so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get fucked, because you know estate sales blow because yeah, yeah. they're more expensive. I go, how much? They're like, well, 50 cents a piece. I'm like, how much do you want for all of this to go? All of it. I, and I know no value, I'm not do, I'm a purist, I don't look shit up. I still like jerk yeah, myself yeah. around. If yeah. I was doing full time, I'd look that. up everything. Yeah. But I'm still, and back then you couldn't look up this way. No smartphones, we used to have to do it on the fucking gut. They go, well, what about 120? And I'm like, what about 20? And I'm like, 20. Like I kind of try to do some like Obi-Wan Kenobi shit. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah. was like 20. They're like, 30 and it's yours. I take it, I buy it. I did have a cell phone, yeah, I had a cell phone. Yes, I called, it's Barna, what was his name, Dave Barna? I called Dave Barna, I'm like, yo, I'm sick, or I fucking, and drove home to AJ to take him out of high school to look up all the shit. Nonetheless, we made like a quadrillion, and there was like 1940 baseball guides, there was the fucking original Pinocchio fucking movie. Wow. They, like, and then like Betty Davis and like fucking Judy Garland, like they were like 30, 40, 50. 25 cents for 300, I need people to understand who are listening right now, yeah. get a fucking scanner. Like, how much are these scanners now? Like 100, 150 bucks, refurbished, 300 brand new. All right, Tyler, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do something real easy, we're gonna do a day, like, we're gonna do a day and I'm just gonna give out like fucking 50 of them. I'm just gonna pick a day in September when we get back, just random, and we're gonna do some sort of funny, he's gonna tweet something cryptic, and I'm gonna see who replies, and just fucking hit him hard giving away fucking scanners because this will be awesome. the, literally be, you know, you, you, it, this will be me giving people a fishing pole mm-hmm. and they're gonna right. fucking eat. Erica, you gotta bounce in no, two no, minutes. Good, good. Give me something good. What do you wanna talk about? What are you thinking about? What do you think about when you hear this? Do you like garage selling? I love garage sales. What's your garage sale game? All right, I used to buy a lot of clothes on eBay and I like Cause you clothes. were like super cool, like retro vintage. Retro vintage and cheap. Like retro vintage and cheap, which is a good combination, I yeah. think. Um, and then that became cool. You were ahead of that it That became again. cool, yeah. but then it became not cool, whatever. But anyways, right. so then it's like hard to part with it. But what do I like in garage sales? I just like what people- The scene, the right? The shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what is going on in your life? Like, how'd you get here? Who are you? What are you about? Like, what are you collecting? How messy are you? Are you a hoarder? Like, oh, I love so the psychology of it. We hope they're hoarders. Yeah, hoarders are great. 
But it's funny. Like, I just cleaned out our garage and, like, put a bunch of shit in a dumpster. And I'm like, I had, we have this, like, lovely Spanish, weirdo Spanish Where's lady in our life. Where's this dumpster located? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she came over yesterday. Did you, do yeah. you, do you, dump, did you dumpster playing. dive? No, but I've done it before. I don't before. think it's a Dude, bad. I, I, wanna, I, I, I just want to go to a junkyard so good bad. luck from it. You know what's yeah. funny when I grew, I would do it right now. I'll fucking go in a dumpster. I, yeah, or I'm a dump. so weird. Oh. I'm not scared of shit. Dumps I'm are fucking great. dirty as fucking yeah. dirt. I but love it's the, the dirt. reward of it. I remember my parents. I grew up in. I was Imagine. born in Colorado. Sorry, Dad. Sorry don't go ahead. No, 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 but we had no money, and my parents like furnished our house from the dump. Like I the love dump it. was like. Could you imagine? Dump if was if where you, went. you know, The dump that's really good is behind shopping malls because a lot of times yeah. killers do shit. I was just thinking. Could you imagine? Like, like. If I like, because I'm now getting hyped and I might get bored late August on my vacation. Could you imagine somewhere in Long Island, somebody driving into a shopping center, like do their groceries, and I, my head pops out of a dumpster yeah. and they're like, Was that Gary? Like, that's yeah. like how much. Video Alex, how's your book doing? It's doing great. It came when out did it come out? Just about a month ago. Okay. Tell the truth, because this is what I love about you and this is why I wanted you on the show. Did it do as well in week one as you thought it was going to do? Not what you hoped. Like straight unemotional, like my kid's not the cutest all the time, yeah. talk. You have a lot of relationships. I'm fascinated by when somebody plays life the way you do, which is try to do the right thing, have my own ambitions, pay forward, build relationships. I think the thing that is always fascinating about a kid or not a kid's first book, especially when they're smart and know how to ask for a right hook, is who comes through and who doesn't. You yeah, must have great. been so fascinated in your first month or two of the people in your mind you're like oh that socialite girl is gonna put me on and is definitely gonna do the selfie picture because I've done nine great things for her and then she didn't or or when somebody came through and bought a hundred and did something rad that you only met once tell everybody who's listening the fascination of that 10 years of being in the game seven years of being in the game and then writing a book and going in for those right hooks and who came through and who didn't and why and how it did so you're right most fascinating thing but you I don't, you don't remember this at all but when i was 19 you gave me three pieces of book advice and one of them was bring your expectations to zero and i remember i was like that makes no sense and as i was gearing up this past year i was like if i don't do that i'm gonna be fucking depressed I am super happy, man. Dude, I could not be here and I would still love you 100% because expectation zero. Brother, that's what I do yeah. all the time. But My, you reprogrammed me when I was 19. You don't know that though. What's amazing about that is for me, the thing about that is that is why I'm happy. Hmm. Literally, everybody's unhappy because they have expectations from something. The government, humans in general, their mother, their best friends, the person they did all these things for. You know how many fuckers running around right now do shit with some agenda on the back end and when that person doesn't come through for them, they're mad at the person, but they were the piece of shit for trying to set up the right. ask. People set up the ask for me all day long. I see it all day long, all day long. They're the fucker. I'm so glad you fucking took that advice and you're right, that is why you're happy. Yeah. Week one, it was crazy because I had, I had a goal for yes. sales. The week before, I was like 40% there. So you were nervous? Terrified. I was like back against the wall, like trying where to close the, deals. Where did the number come from? Because it's always arbitrary. Um, the it, it all came throughout that week. No, no, where, so, where, how'd you come up with the fucking number? Uh, just talking to people. You know, they say like 30,000 30, gets you this, 10,000 gets you this. So I was- So what was your number? It was 10. I was, shooting, I was shooting for 10 week one. I love you for that, because that, to me, knowing you from afar, and obviously yeah. intimately in your early days and things of that nature, that's a very realistic number. I, I've, yeah. I've, you, you pleasantly just surprised me, and that doesn't happen to me often. Thank you, man. I'm proud of you, man, that's really good. Thank you. Okay, so you're at 4,000, you're like, fuck! Dude, Pete, my publisher is, is printing 5,000 copies, but I'm like, my goal is 10,000, you yeah. know? And at the last second, they had to do three reprints. Yeah. I hit. 10,000 week one. That's awesome. And I, dude, I know you do that like in a day before the I book do, comes but out. I'm but I'm much better than you. You're way I'm kidding, far. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, dude, you're 10 years into the I game. I get it, of course, dude. Dude, yeah. I'm super proud of you Thank on the 10,000 Wait, thing, so man. you're gonna do another book? What's uh, next? Well, right now, it's a, it's a month in. Okay, you're a month in, you're in the I'm a month in, and the most surprising thing, man, not just the, okay, look, there's people who didn't give love. Hook it up the way I thought, I hoped, I hoped they would hook it up. By the way, and I always, 
there's hope and there's expectation. Yeah. My hope yes, is that everybody, exactly. I'm like, yo, they buy 80,000 pairs of sneakers. I hit him up, I'm like, yo, let's go hard. He's like, yo, bro, I don't, I'm not, you know, because I'm thinking about the flip game and everything. I hit him up because I'm like, he's really, and he's like, yo, like, like I can't buy fucking a thousand or a hundred of your sneakers. I'm like, bet, I get it. Like, I, I never, like, there's always hope in that. Like, the reason I wrote Jab, 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 Right Hook, it's so important. Mm. Give, 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 and then ask, not take or expect. I'm super thrilled to ask, but when the answer is no or I can't, I'm like, you know where I weirdly go? Compassion. Hmm. It was crazy when we had that exchange. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fucking do, like, that's probably why you're on. Think about that. The no for the sneaker two like two months ago was like, Fuck. what did you ask me to buy a thousand pairs? I don't even remember, dude. You know what happens? I go on planes and I, you know how it actually happens? You're just crazy. You're gonna love this. I go into DM <laughs> and I hit the A button and whoever shows up, I just go freestyle. Like literally I probably hit R on fucking Instagram direct message, knew I had seven minutes to fucking throw right hooks, hit R, your fucking glasses fucking cartoon came up, I hit it and I'm like, yo, buy a thousand. I don't know, I, I think you're making 40 million a year on fucking selling books. Right. You don't know and the cool thing is when you don't expect and your intent is pure, you don't, it doesn't get, con, it doesn't get convoluted. When he's right. like, and you resp- I remember the energy, I don't remember verbatim, I remember the energy of like, yo dog, listen bro, I've already, I support you the last thing, like, I, can't, I don't have it, like I'm doing my thing over here. And I remember going into like, bet, totally, like, and where my you, head- Yeah, you responded in like 0. 0.2 seconds. Because I appreciate, first of all, I appreciate the honesty. Some people are like, I got you and they don't come through. Two, I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I so think you're gonna, like, you're gonna, this is the ultimate compliment. I think you're gonna end up in such a crazy place if you can stay disciplined that I'm probably thinking you're, like, it's like me. I have way less money than people think. Way less. Because I'm betting all in. If I started my mastermind tomorrow, I'd make 100 million a year. So I understood it, I had empathy, and it probably in the last 18 months that you've been trying to get here, it's the, you saying no, nothing for the sneakers is why you're sitting here. Think about the fucking. That's hilarious. It, think about the brain fuck that is. If that is not the lesson of this fucking episode, it's empathy on empathy on empathy, non-expectation. The reason you're smiling left and right is the, there's people that probably really let you down on your hope. Like when I said that right now, two or three faces flashed in front of your head. But when you don't have expectations, you can get over it. You, it doesn't mean you're not like to your homies like, that fucking Rick's such a dick. Does Rick not remember I fucking introduced him to the hottest girl he ever hooked up with? Like I know. Like there's people that said no to me that I fucking put onto an investment that they made 10 million dollars on and they couldn't buy 100 of my books. Mm. They made 10 milli. Mm. There's a dude right now running around. He knows who he is if he's listening. And here's the best part, I got love for him. Yeah. Clearly at that moment, who the fuck knows what's going on? I'm not judging. But hope and expectations, two different things. And when you learn how to separate that shit, you get real happy real fast. Yeah, hope hope for the best, expect for the worst, right? 100%. Then and you're, have then you're empathy. always happy. Have empathy. Right. Empathy is what got you here. I'm like, okay, cool, we need to put him on the next spot. It's like, see, because he's right. close. You know, like, it's cool. Like, you know? Which is why I really resonate with you being an immigrant. I'm not an immigrant, yes. but I grew up with immigrants because I grew up so poor. You know, I, I get grew it. up in the barrio and I never had anything to lose. My parents neglected me, so I learned how to ask and not give a shit because what did I have to lose? <laughs> right. You know, they, right. I need to speak up or you're not going to listen. That's how I Pride's became a salesman. really cute when you got something. Right. And then what, what, Pride's ha- what really, happens? You know what? Let's stay here for a second, right? Hmm. Pride's really cute when you have something. When you don't have food yeah. or shelter, that's why, you know, I make this comment a lot. I'm like, I would not judge somebody who's got nothing and is homeless stealing fruit from a basket. I don't know what else to tell you. I, mm. I can't get over it. I, yeah. That is my truth belief. Like, I get it. You actually said that you would steal food for totally. feed your kids Thank if you, you had to. Because I would. Because I'm telling you, you the truth. I would. Have. I would. And I would keep score. And if my circumstances yeah, changed, I'd roll back. up on a fucking, you know, bodega yeah. nine years later and be like, yo, here's 83 bucks. And the yeah. guys would be like, what? I'm like, I stole $83 worth of shit. Three years. <laughs> Actually, I sold 72. That's inflation. Got you. See yeah. ya. Like, you know, like, <laughs> uh, I believe in the macro. I think it's why I'm not scared of making mistakes. Right. Like, the reason I live so in the open is because I don't fear. I don't fear because if I make a mistake, which I intend on doing because I'm a human, I'm gonna own that shit. And as long as it's not fucking murder or harassment, if, as long as it's something fucking serious as fuck, I'll be able to get over it. Yes, you'll be disappointed in me. I'm disappointed in myself more than you'll ever be disappointed in me if I do something. Who knows what can happen in life? People are like, you're so lucky. I'm like, until tomorrow when my kids die in a fucking car accident, then am I lucky in life? Why are we judging? LeBron's so lucky. 
What if his fucking wife and kids going into their new home in LA right now moving get hit by a bus and they die forever? Is LeBron fucking lucky? Fuck you. Stop judging. Right? You eliminate judgment, you will fucking live. Fucking judgment is the poison of our society right now. So much judgment. You don't know what's going on in somebody's home. Definitely. I think that Buy that Alex's men, book, that, by that the way. Let's get him 10,000 tomorrow. Link that shit in the fucking... <laughs> like, let, let's really fucking humble him and make him realize how much better I really am than him. <laughs> that one right hook in my one podcast late into the episode with a right hook sells more than his whole fucking life tried to sell. <laughs> Buy his fucking book, I guarantee it's good. I will never read it, but I never give uh, people daps, but this guy, he's a good kid. I like the way he's doing do you, it. Do you do audio version? Oh yeah, I recorded it too. You recorded oh, yourself? Cool. Yeah. Good job. I, I absolutely hate it when people don't read their own audio book. It's, it's fun. It's, it was, it was actually disgusting. the most fun part of the whole process, sure. the audio Last thing you want everybody to know, because we gotta bounce, I got a ton of shit to do, I gotta go see my family. Erica? Thanks for having us. Bye, Rough and Rowdy, next Sunday night. How much is it? It is right now fifteen ninety nine. Oh, how do you do it? Nineteen ninety nine night of. Oh, that's how you do it. Mm. We did an early bird special. There's a bunch of. I love that shit. You got and the whole season for six ninety nine because we didn't know. Oh, that's fucking amazing. So, it's so fun. Good for that. That I, do you know that's what I do? By the way, did you do that? If, are, you gonna, are you going to do a book? You think like an official book at some point? Yeah, I'm you, working on it. So, I do the best thing when I sell sneakers or books. I come up with these secret packages. Totally. And everybody like shits on me, like who wants to shit on me. And I laugh because I always know that, like and Tyler's probably laughing right now. So cool, buy 10 sneakers. I'll probably do one more surprise for sneakers. Buy 10 sneakers, it's a thousand bucks. Buy 10 sneakers, send me your receipt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you by the end of the year. You don't know what's gonna happen. Totally. I laugh because the level of work we put into giving people something that's worth more yep. than what they bought for a thousand yep is like my obsession. I yeah. love the surprise. And the game of it is awesome. Right, when you did the preview and it was six ninety nine, people were like, we don't know what we're gonna get today. And people are like, you're such an idiot. People are stealing from you. And I'm like, you know what? I hope they steal from me. Of course. Mm. What do you have to say? First off, um, Gary is obviously the goat. Like, if you don't like consume his content, at least check it out. I recommend everybody to read Crush It because it thoroughly changed my life. And second- Is it um, crazy that that book was written in 2008? Came out in 09. Yeah. Like how right historically that book is? No, it's insane. It's the blueprint. You don't need like, just read Crush It, that's it. You don't need to read the other books. You don't need to watch anything. Just read Crush It. And if you, you know, if you're not succeeding in whatever you want to do after that, like it's your own fault. But um, other than that, um, if you're not happy with your nine to five, go to Reezy.tv and hit subscribe. <laughs> Spell it. Reezy.tv, R-E-E-Z-Y dot TV. Alex? I was actually thinking about this in the elevator coming up. Yes. I'm playing around this idea. You, this is the thing. I think you give so much great advice to so many people, you don't remember what you've told me. I think over the past six years, I can write a fucking like five page white paper on all the crazy things that you've told me. Do it and I'll share it. You'll get look, I'll, I'll get I look, love that. it's done. Do I'd it. I love that, man. Do it. It'll be fun. Listen. One thing that, you know, I don't, you know, everyone's busy, but so I don't think this has necessarily hit your three radars, but over the last week or two, I'm starting to really get serious about my Throwback Thursday shit, because mm. now I'm in the game. Yeah. Now, my, now I can put up videos in 2008 and nine, yep. and we've, it's been really great for a couple reasons. One, for all the kids out there, when they look at it, they're like, yo, like, wait, Gary Vee's been making videos for 10 years? I just found out about him three weeks ago. He just got popular. It's like, oh shit, this yeah, is for real. Depth. Number two, it's, I'm saying fucking tried and true. Like my ch- message is not gonna change. Mm. And so like, cool man, I'd love that. It's, dude, it's been working since I was 18. I chased you down at South by Southwest. Uh, you have no idea. Like, dude, 18. Happy. And all these kids watching this, like in five years, they'll be coming on and like showing you how it paid off. It's very few brands like that. that I think that's have. right. Very few people like that. I, yeah. I know that to be true. I knew, I knew from the moment is that so I- so rare. I knew from the moment that I watched anything, I was like, dude, this dude is legit, real as fuck. He actually wants to help people, like, from your heart. Like, I don't, I don't know, I can't, I can't quantify it. It's just, like, in my head, like, just, like, a feeling. And I was like, I was like, this guy is, like, Doing really similar different. to me. Like, I believe crazy, you. Like, I believe you. Because I see it in you too, man. Like, hustler. Yeah. But stamina, that's your that's the other thing. Yeah, you know what, it's fun. I'm looking at all three of you and I remember more than you might even think. Like I think back to our meetings, mm-hmm. like like the business meetings mm-hmm. with backstage and stuff, like that's you know what I love? I love the truth. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably the way it's you know, like yeah. like 
like there's so many different settings in public, in one-on-ones, you know, so different, yeah. so much communication on DMs, like business meetings when nobody was looking, totally. like you know, like actually totally. we were probably spent most of our time together in that one weird totally. two-year period when I was doing nothing, yeah, when I was really deep into yeah. Vayner, yeah. when I wasn't doing Wine It or other yeah. video, and I wasn't doing my vlog, yeah, yeah. You remember the one a.m. Mid Cafe meeting? The one a.m. One a.m. Mid Cafe. McCafe, keep talking. I, I will was, in a minute. I was 19 years old, keep and I going. told you my biggest dream was to shadow you for a day. Yep. It wasn't able to work out because of different, like HR yep. things were happening that day. Yep. And you made it up to me by meeting me at 1 a.m. at the McCafe next to the old Vayner office. And when I told that to people, they thought I was fucking with them. I was like, he actually did it. You know what's interesting about that? In the fact of not remembering it so easily, it's what I want everybody to do. Like, just do the right thing. Like, yeah. when I hear that, and I think to myself. Like I can see, like I can be outside myself, be like, "Oh, that's cool." The fact that it's th- not something that I want to tell people, or yeah. I think it's cool, it means that it's just my being. Yeah, and that's just like just do so much right shit that you can't even remember your right shit. People like write a thousand dollar check to the you know to a charity, and then they fucking promote it for the rest of their lives. Like just do the right thing so much. It's normal that it's normal. Yeah. Thank you guys. Love you. Thank you, man. Thanks, Gary.